Hi, Duck Crunch. We got Dmitry Alima from Frontier Ventures here with us. And just a few very brief questions. So, uh, have, you, have you already found any interesting startups to invest? Any uh, term sheets signed here at TechCrunch? <laughs> well, considering that I'm here for an hour and a half, uh, not yet, uh, and most of the time I was on the panel, but uh, uh, there are some interesting people here at the conference, yes. In, in, in your lifetime as a VC, w which was the fastest term sheet signed ever? Ooh, um, maybe a couple of weeks, but that's more of an exception. We usually like to get to know our uh, entrepreneurs fairly well, uh, so I can see when this is a sort of a co-investment situation, we could move quickly, but if we're the lead investor, we really like to get to know people we're going to be partners with uh, really well. And I think it would be pretty safe to say that a lot of startups here in the alley are searching for, scouting for investors here at TechCrunch. You as a VC, do, what do you take out of these conferences? Um, I think this is a very good uh, way to meet a lot of people in a short period of time, uh, mostly entrepreneurs, but also other investors, uh, potential co-investors. Uh, there's some value, I suppose, in, uh, in the panels and, and some of the speakers that are at the conference, especially TechCrunch, has been uh, very good at bringing high-quality people to Moscow. But mostly, this is just a way of uh, meeting a lot of people in a short period of time. And for, for, for the startups that are looking for investors here, do you, do you think it's a, a viable strategy for going to conferences to network and to look for, to search for potential investors? Uh, yes, I think that should certainly be part of their strategy, but of course not the only part. I think that uh, as I think about the Russian entrepreneurs who are looking for investment, one thing that I do notice, and, and I think this is sort of uh, particular to uh, younger markets like Russia, is that surprisingly how little homework a lot of the startups actually do before they approach investors. So we are frequently approached about seed financing, even though we don't really do seed deals. Uh, some of the segments uh, that people ask us to invest in, they're just completely outside of our scope. So I would say that if, if, if an, an entrepreneur just read our website and just kind of understood what, what is it that we're interested in, we would probably not receive 90% of the emails and, and uh, uh, pitches that we receive. And I think that's not very helpful because it wastes the entrepreneur's time, but it also wastes our time. And when someone kind of sends us a pitch on a sort of Hail Mary basis, um, people just immediately lose a lot of credibility. And I think that entrepreneurs would be much better served that they, if they made the effort to actually do the homework. Do, do you have an, ele an elevator pitch as an investor? You, you, where you invest, how much you invest? Uh, sure. So we are... Uh, unlike many of the um, investors in the marketplace in the sense that A, we like to focus on established business models uh, where there's a, a successful global company that's uh, already proven the business model itself. Uh, we're focused on the Russian-speaking space for now uh, and we tend to make relatively few investments uh, because we believe in focusing in on large opportunities. So we want to spend a lot of time with a small number of teams to make sure they succeed in the marketplace. And in terms of uh, technologies or industries that, that you're particularly interested in? So most of the stuff we look at uh, uh, would be on the consumer side, although, although we do look at some business-to-business uh, -business opportunities as well. Uh, right now we're focused on uh, financial services online. Uh, we also like marketplaces. We recently mm -hmm. announced a marketplace investment in the Rudita group. Uh, we like education space, although it's a little bit too early because we don't see uh, well-established business models globally yet. Um, of course, mobile services uh, as well. Uh, so those would be some of the uh, sort of most interesting things we're looking at. And, and, and if you were to become an entrepreneur now, to, to go back into being a 
s uh, startup founder, which, which industry drives you most now? You know, I would probably go into online financial services. I think the opportunity is huge, and I think that the Russian-speaking space is only now beginning to take advantage of that opportunity. I think that's probably, in this market, I think this is the most exciting thing right now. I think that this, this would be a good reason for us to wrap up, just because we have several finance, financial services startups right here on the Startup Alley, so you, you might consider going there to, to speak to them. Excellent. Thank you very Excellent. much. Thank this is Dmitry Alivim of Frontier Ventures. Thank you. Thank you.